Hey everyone, this is Jay Clark over here at CES 2018. I'm here with Harris from uh, Lulzbot, and we are going to be talking about a bunch of different stuff. So what do we have going on behind us? So at the booth this year, we're showing that, and as people, have fans of Fargo 3D printing know, 3D printers can make everything. And one of the coolest things they make is themselves. So we've got, on the other side of the booth, we've got a cluster of machines that are 3D printing more parts. And then here, on this side of the booth, we've actually brought some of our production folks here, and we're manufacturing on the show floor. And how many are you trying to make this uh, for this, like during the show? So we're making five a day, but I talked to our production guys yesterday, and they definitely think we could do more. They want to do <laughs> over 10 a day, but it's kind of more of a demonstration than uh, actually trying to fill inventory. <laughs> Yeah, and so you're actually giving some of these away, correct? Yes, that's right. So we're giving them away on our website, uh, lulzbot.com slash make dash everything, uh, if you want a chance to win one, or for attendees at the show. Perfect. And you actually have a special guest in the booth, and so can you tell me a little bit about uh, who that is and, and what uh, you know what why you brought him out here kind of thing? So we had Joel telling the 3D printing nerd visit us uh, in the booth and just kind of check out the area. The 3D printing industry is really uh, evolving and it's growing and there's a lot of new technologies and applications coming out every day. And so it's just fun to have people that are in the industry like Fargo and, and like Joel um, just kind of sharing those stories for people outside of the industry. And like our manufacturing and printing demo here, a lot of people that are familiar with RepRap uh, are familiar with this concept, but we've had people all week just sort of blown, blowing their minds that printers can print themselves and talking about Terminator. And, um, and so it's fun to kind of spread that message outside of, our, of the normal uh, industry. Definitely. So let's dive into a couple of different things. So can you tell me a little bit about you know, what's coming up with, you know, I, we, we've seen pictures of different things in the Devel site. So can you share a little bit about like what's going on with like uh, the potential for a TAS 7 kind of thing? Can we touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so well, the big news is all the products that we've just released. At the show, we've got the AeroStruder toolhead. So we worked with E3D um, and it's got their Titan Aero toolhead and that's available now for the TAS and the Mini. Uh, and we also just released the version 3 of our dual extruder for soluble supports. And we've got the modular beds for the TAS and the Mini. Um, we've also got Cura, new Cura, um, which is a big step forward. We're really excited about that. What, ad what additions in the Cura side of things that, that, um, that you like more than like the previous one? Well, so for advanced user, for new users, it's the same. We still have that easy path where you pick your filament, you've got that primary path. But for advanced users, there's just way more in the advanced settings. Like you can just uh, tweak and tune and dig more into the slicing out engine, and you can control more of what the machine does. Um, so it's just got it's got a lot more features, uh, and it looks nice. It's got just a nice refreshed interface, so looks better. Cool, and and so where is where can people start following you with like the development site? Like you know, we, we chatted a little bit about like the TAS seven kind yeah. of the upgraded things that you guys are doing there. Where can they follow these different projects specifically? Yeah, so, yeah, so we always have R and D going on at devel d e v e l dot lulzbot com, and so yeah, we're always working on new tech. Some of that's new printers, some of it's new accessories for the printers, and new software. Um, so devel, uh, and then we also have our software repositories are online at code. C-O-D-E dot objects.com. And that's our software for like Cura development. So if someone has like a feature request, that would be where they could submit it. Awesome. And you know, so you guys are in the open source market and Proust is in the open source market. So tell me like how their popularity kind of in, in the US market has started to kind of, they started to kind of come up. How is that like relationship going and how do you, um, you know, foresee that with, within the open source and within like the 3D printing market as a whole? Yeah, so we think it's great. So Prusa is an open source hardware company, and so we definitely compete with them in a sense, but we really have a lot more in common with them. And when they're helping grow the market and they're helping advance open hardware, you know, we're doing the same thing. Um, you know, they work with a lot of the same vendors that we do. Um, so to us, that's a good thing. Um, our company is positioned a little differently in terms of, um, you know, we offer 24/7 tech support, um, really, really heavily invest in documentation and quality control and. Um, we manufacture in Colorado. So our, our focus is a little bit different than some other companies. And in general, we think a growing market is a good thing. Um, and we think there's room for lots of machines out there. We tend to sell a lot um, and work a lot with professional users, educators, libraries, professional environments where the machines are running a lot. Um, so we're excited that he's growing and that open hardware is growing because um, it's good. And like one of the, our favorite vendors is Ultimachine, Machine, which is in Tennessee, who makes the Rambos and the Mini Rambos and the INC boards. Um, and so, so it's really good. It's 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 good for the industry and it's good for open hardware. 
Awesome. And so you guys chatted a little bit about and, and announced um, a partnership with the film side of things. So yeah. how how do you foresee opening that up to your users? How is that going to help within the 3D printing market? So we, we worked earlier uh, in 2016, uh, 2017, excuse me, we announced at Rapid, the trade show in Pittsburgh, that IC3D um, was going to be doing open hardware filament for the first time. And uh, we got a lot of questions back of like, why? <laughs> that's, that's one of my questions, yeah. why? <laughs> like, well, you know, what's the reason? And I mean, so our default answer is like, why not? You know, yeah. everything should be open. Um, but interestingly, one of the initial reactions that we got at that trade show was a lot of um, customers that are really focused on their supply chain. Um, so particularly in um, like really specific manufacturing environments or even military environments where they need to know everything they're working with and they need to know all their risks if something goes if they if a supplier they can't work with for some reason and so they were really excited about that transparency and their ability to therefore um, certify and like officially approve additive manufacturing in with like uh, mission critical activities okay. because then the idea is like hey because we know how this is made we can rely on it because if we have to rely on another vendor we can replicate the process mm -hmm. anyways that's like a very in the weeds Fans of Fargo 3D printing love the details, but for the general public, why I would say it's exciting is that um, we just, you understand more of how it works, and it's gonna enable more innovation, more companies maybe can introduce or improve their process, and maybe it'll help elevate the quality of production, um, and I think maybe it'll help people bring new materials to market, mm -hmm. where maybe they're having difficulty extruding and they just kind of learn the basics. Um, but, you know, in general, the film market's really competitive, and there's a lot of good products out there, um, and I think that's a benefit because of the open standards. Because companies don't have to go through hoops and signing NDAs and, 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 and white labeling and hiding what materials are, because people see who the vendors are and they know what the materials are, I think it's really good for users. Very awesome. So what do you see in 2018 that you guys are kind of, you know, I know you have your stuff right now. What are you like excited about for 20, 2018? Are you going into any new um, countries? Are you going into any new stuff that, um, you know, maybe we'll see at Rapid or, or what's kind of your 2018 vision for, for that? Well, so our, our focus, you know, we're talking about here making everything and, and we feel like our role in that, um, in that conversation is hardware and software and that like kind of that workflow, that tool chain. Um, we're working on, of course, always working on new printers and we're working on making the software smoother and easier to use so that it integrates with, with workflows. We're not like, there's no like one whiz bang, like, you know, you can time travel with your, you know. Oh, come on, that'd be great. I mean, yeah, but you're in a spot, you know, time, time elevator thing. Um, but there's lots of new features and capabilities. I think what we've just released, these new products um, are a good preview of what's to come from us. You know, people that are using printing being like, oh wow, that's super useful. Mm -hmm. You know, oh I can print with that with soluble materials easier, great. I need that every day. Um, so I think that's that's kind of what the direction. No sort of like blow your mind things, but people that use 3D printing solutions that they'll be excited about. Um, yeah. So with the water soluble, so we're gonna go back a little bit. Yeah. So um, how have you found that was success within your dual extruders? Yeah, so we've it's it's a challenge. Working with water soluble materials in general is a challenge. They they, they, they love water, they soak up water, you know, <laughs> you know they, they often have different um, temperature, um, comp, you know, re respond to temperatures differently than a lot of other materials that you print with, so they don't play nicely with other <laughs> materials. Um, so in general, they've been challenging, and so we're now on the third version, the third iteration of our dual extruder. Um, we worked with E3D on that and helping, we were focused on just kind of more active cooling and just working the, the main thing on the dual that we really focus on is soluble mm -hmm. because you can dual extrude or dual print lots of materials but that was just like hey let's just like laser focus on that one use case and so we spent a lot more time tuning the profiles and working on the cooling and working on so that the designer doesn't have to worry about geometry as much and so by focusing our like product roadmap and our product vision i think it helped us achieve that a lot better um and so then we weren't juggling like materials with 10 different uh, profiles with 10 different materials and stuff like that so that, that in general was like our thought process and the types of problems we're trying to solve. So it's more of a professional user. I mean, it's a $500 tool head upgrade to a $2,500 printer. It's definitely not, um, it's definitely for people that, you know, have like really specific things they want to design. Yeah. And so that's who we wanted to help out. Perfect. Well, is there anything else that you want to add about Lulzbot or ALF in general? 
No, we're staying busy. We're you know pushing open source uh, and free software. Um, we've got really exciting projects. We're working with the Blender Institute on some really interesting new projects to make uh, using Blender and 3D modeling easier, which are really exciting. Yeah, that 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 learning curve <laughs> is quite quite steep. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, when you talk to people, they get excited about 3D printing, and then they're like, "So how do I make my own stuff?" Yep. And that's a challenge. Yeah. Um, we're not you know a CAD company, mm -hmm. uh, so we're working with the pros at Blender. Uh, and we're really excited. So that's that's kind of, that's a cool thing. The other thing that we're working on that we think is going to be good. Are we going to see something from that in this year? Then uh, I'm hoping so. We we hopefully are going to start seeing progress. But it is a Blender project. We're more supporting, okay. um, you know, financially supporting and then helping on the project. But um, I'm hoping so. They're making good progress. They've got really good developers that are working on it, um, which is good. So yeah. Perfect. Well, thanks everyone for watching, and thank you for the for the time today. Um, we're gonna we're gonna stick around and see some of the uh, assembly work that they're doing behind us, um, and uh, we'll actually probably be hopefully wrangling Joel Telling from away from you for a few minutes yes. to to grab some of his thoughts. So again, thank you so much, and have a good CES. Thanks.